solid, creative, and I know this is incredibly boring, don't fall asleep on me yet, song structure. I can hear the snores now. I mean, I, songwriters hate, hate to think about song structure. It's not one of those things with sizzle or sexiness or any of those things. Song structure is like, oh, I don't want to think about that. It's like so boring. But the truth is, the song structure is like the bones in your skin. Yeah. And if you didn't have the bones in the skin, you'd just have this blob. And listeners hate blobs. They want structure. They want to feel like the song is going somewhere. They want to feel like they're looking forward to hearing something. Intuitively, they can feel when it should. Yes, so they if can. it's not there, you lose them. Yes, they yeah. can. And they, we've been listening. We now have generations of people who've grown up since the 50s listening to contemporary pop music. Mm -hmm. And they all know verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. They all know it. So they're expecting... It's, in, it's intuitive. It's right. so hardwired into us now that we expect structure. And if that structure doesn't appear, listeners start doubting that the song the song's going anywhere. It's yeah. like suddenly they're lost, the, the blob comes down, and they just tune out. They're gone. So structure is extremely important. And today's most popular hit song structure is verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then either a very short bridge or a little bit of an instrumental, or the production itself takes a little break there, and we have some vocalizing or something like that, so that you can come back to a final chorus. That's really the whole reason that's there. you got to go away so you can come back to the final chorus. And I really recommend vocal bridges. They can be very short, just a couple lines to say, and this is how I really feel about it two lines, and then into your final chorus, just to give people a little bit more information before you sing that final chorus. What is the job of the bridge? That's the job of the bridge. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, do, it, do it again, go away, come back. Is a format, it's a form that people, humans, are hardwired to like. You can watch a toddler do that. They'll do it, they'll do something again, then they'll get involved in something else, but they'll come back to this. Mm. It's really basic human structure. Do it, do it again, go away, come back. Do it, first pre-chorus, chorus. Do it again, first pre-chorus, chorus. Go away, bridge come back chorus. Mommy, I need a Twinkie. There you go. That's exactly right. Yeah, and you'll see kids do that. They'll, they'll take off and they'll come back, take off and come back, and then they'll go do something else and come back. So do it, do it again, go away, come back is a major form, not just for overall song structure, but also, by the way, for, uh, for melody structure as well within sections. But for the overall song structure, that's the way we do it. Now, you can be creative with your song structure once you know that that's the basic song structure and you know what the what the function is of each section so the bridge is go away mm -hmm. come back verses are to give us more information choruses are to build up the emotion and let the listener really feel what the heart of the song is about then you get another verse to give you more information and then feel what this feels like and then the bridge let's go away over here and I'll tell you something really special then one more chorus and you're out of it that's the function of each section, and if you don't do that, listeners don't get the full ride, you know, the full experience. I'll bet you, if you just took the kick and snare, the kick drum and snare drum from any big hit, and just played that with maybe <laughs> the first few notes to tell them which song it was, most people would be able to tell you intuitively which... You know, just hearing the kick and snare where those sections are, because you're right, yes. it's ingrained. And that's a good thing, because later on we're going to talk about writing top line to there. tracks. Well, there you go. <laughs> so we're going to end up there, so hang on, we're going to get there. Um, yes, yeah, so now what we're seeing quite a bit now is starting with the chorus. Mm -hmm. So Charlie Puth starts with, we don't talk anymore, we don't talk anymore. You know, uh, what was all of it for, we don't talk anymore, um, like we used to do. In those couple of lines, you get the whole situation of what's going on with the singer. Mm -hmm. And that's those are the opening lines. So if you're going to open with a chorus, be sure that your chorus can stand alone, just like this one does, because there's no verse to introduce it and explain to people what your chorus is about. But it makes you want to know more. It because does. It identifies we don't talk problem. anymore. We yeah. don't talk anymore like we used to do. Why don't they talk anymore? Or I've been there too. I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear more because I can engage with that, what he's talking about. So these are really strong opening lines. Pay attention to your opening line, whether it's your um, chorus or it's your first verse. Your opening line is the very first line the listener hears, and you need to engage them right away. 
Um, listeners don't have a long attention span, especially these days. We what? used <laughs> and they used to be more forgiving, but not anymore, boy. You, you got to get there. So give them a key line. That's the opening line of your verse, last line of your verse. Excuse me, opening line of your verse is first line of your chorus and last line of your chorus. Those are key lines. So give them an opening line, and if they miss it, if they're not paying attention but they hear the chorus, give them a strong opening line for your chorus. So, Because once you get a chance to catch them, be sure you catch them. Because uh, they're gone. Once they're gone, they're gone. Today's listeners are very intense, and they don't have long attention spans. So you have wait. to keep them entertained. Yeah. And you see that in movies. You see it in in on the internet. You see it in songs. You see it. It's just the way the culture is now. Is these days. No, because everything is and faster. We have to, yeah, we have to deal with that. So. Um, Every line counts now, and you can also count on your your poor listener being distracted by you know the dog in the back seat and the kids screaming and having to cook dinner and you know five different things while your song is playing. Or the most evil distraction. Of yes. All yes. So if you get a hot opening line, they may not hear it because they're distracted. The dog barked right there, and that line's gone. So then you get a good strong second line. One of the great places to catch people, and this is a structural sizzle that I really like, and that's your pre-chorus. We didn't have pre-choruses back on those songs like Don't Stop Believing, did not have a pre-chorus. You did see them, Billy Jean had one, but they were very rare, and now it's practically, it's something you should really look at because it's such a wonderful thing to do. If they and had pre-choruses back then, it was by accident. It was, by yeah, <laughs> that's right. So one of my favorite uh, groups to look at for pre-choruses is Imagine Dragons. Mm. And at the Taxi road rally I played the pre-chorus of Believer mm -hmm. and it's got this great kind of almost like a trumpet fanfare melody for this big pre-chorus that just builds and builds to this huge chorus. If you go and listen to um, the uh, Natural which is another one of their huge hits you'll hear the same thing you'll hear this really big build long involved pre-chorus and at the very end of it he goes um, uh, the pre-chorus, that's the price you pay, leave behind your heartache, cast away, and then he keeps going for line after line, and finally at the end he goes, and you're standing on the edge face up because you're a, uh, wait for it, natural. And he gives you this moment where it just pauses on the edge of this cliff before he falls into that chorus with this huge natural. This is a great trick to use in a song of your own. You're going to use not the. You're not going to copy what they did. No, no intellectual property is harmed here, but that idea of finishing your pre-chorus almost, but not quite, and the last line of the pre-chorus is the first line of the chorus. It hauls listeners into your chorus and literally does not let them escape. I can prove your point. I can, not that you need any credibility from me, but watch um, any TV show that's on regular TV. Uh, Deb and I were watching yes. last night a new show called Living With Yourself. Um, it's on Netflix with Paul Rudd, or Rude, whatever his name is. Anyway, um, great cliffhangers at the end of the scene, you know, like a commercial break. Um, yes. Or, yeah. or from, from one episode to the next. Yes. And, and that's what these are. These oh, are absolutely. It's a cliffhanger it's, going into the chorus. You yeah. want to catch it. And if you've got a build like these guys do, and they right. are really good at those pre chorus builds, these are massive pre choruses. They're much longer than I would ever recommend doing, yeah. but they're using them. It's got a function, and the function is really clear when you slam into that chorus. And there's no way to miss that. You know, it's for every distracted listener out there. Right. This this pre-chorus was written for you. But yet, an uninitiated, newish songwriter would go, oh, I don't want to use structure, it's yeah. formulaic. But you know what? You just watched a TV show that had it. Mm -hmm. So many, you just read a book that had it. You yeah. just read a, a blog that had it. Pretty much anything that gets legs has a structure. Scripts, so that validates, movies, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Every script has a structure. It's a very clear structure for scenes. So absolutely, and the reason is because it keeps listeners or viewers motivated and it keeps them watching, and that's what you want, or keeps them listening. So that's you can have fun with structure. I guess what I'm saying is be creative with your structure. Don't think of it as a drawback. Think of it as a plus, and use it to strengthen your song and grab the listener's attention and hold on to it. It. Maximize the impact of every single section that you have in your song, verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. Don't think that any one of those sections right. is a throwaway.